Catchers was introduced in 2003 for the extraction of pesticides and other contaminants in fruits and vegetables. Since then, the technique has been expanded to a wide variety of food products, blood and soil. Catchers stands for quick, easy, cheap, effective, rugged and safe. This simple two-phase extraction technique is based on salting out followed by dispersive solid phase extraction cleanup. The original method used sodium chloride for salting out. However, this was found to give poor recovery for base sensitive compounds such as the fungicides chlorothalonil and captain. This led to the development of two buffered methods for the initial extraction step. The American Association of Analytical Chemists Ketcher's 2007.01 method and the EN15662 EU method. The main protocol steps are the same for each method, however they differ in the buffer systems used and there are slight variations in the sample weights and solvent volumes utilised. Manufacturers supply kits with pre-weighed reagents covering all methods. The first step in a catcher's extraction is the salting out procedure. Only a small portion of the original sample weight will be used for the catcher's method, therefore it is important that it is well homogenised to increase surface area, which aids extraction, to break down cell structure and to present a representative sample. To prevent loss of volatile pesticides during homogenation, samples can be pre-frozen and dry ice added. Weigh the appropriate sample amount for your method into a 50ml centrifuge tube. Water is essential for partitioning to occur during the extraction procedure. Many fruits and vegetables contain between 80 and 95% water. For dry samples such as beans or grains, an appropriate portion of water should be added. An internal standard can be added to minimise error generation in the multiple steps of the catcher's method. Next, the partitioning solvent is added to the centrifuge tube containing the solid sample. Although other non-halogenated solvents such as acetone and ethyl acetate may be used, acetonitrile is the recommended solvent due to the fact that upon addition of salts, it is separated more easily from water than acetone. Furthermore, extraction recoveries of polar pesticides are improved through the use of acetonitrile. Shake or vortex a sample prior to addition of salts. Add the appropriate composition of buffering salt mixture depending on your method. Manufacturers provide pre-weighed pourable packets as part of their catcher's kits. The addition of salt induces phase separation. It is important to add the salt to the acetonitrile solution to avoid an exothermic reaction which could result in loss of volatiles. It is for this reason that salt pre-filled centrifuge tubes should not be used. Most pesticides are more stable at lower pH values. However, for certain problematic pesticides which are protonated at low pH, the extraction system must be buffered in the pH range 2 to 7 for successful extraction. The pH at which the extraction is performed can influence the co-extraction of matrix components and pesticide stability. Shake the centrifuge tube which now contains the sample, acetonitrile, salts and internal standard for one minute. The tube should be vented periodically to release any buildup of pressure. The tube is then centrifuged for 5 minutes at 4000 RPM to ensure phase separation and to allow excess salts and matrix to be separated from the supernatant liquid. Four layers will be apparent after centrifugation. The top layer is acetonitrile which contains the analytes of interest. The next layer is solid material from the sample. The third layer is the water layer which will contain polar interferences from the sample such as sugars. Without the water layer, these interferences would be present in the acetonitrile layer. The bottom layer consists of undissolved buffer salts. The next step is dispersive solid phase extraction. Dispersive SPE reduces the concentration of fats, proteins, chlorophyll and other matrix components. An aliquot of the acetonitrile layer is added to a vial containing a small amount of dispersive SPE sorbent and magnesium sulphate. The sample is shaken by hand for one minute or vortex to thoroughly mix the sample and SPE material. The sorbent is separated by centrifugation at 4000 RPM for five minutes. An aliquot of the supernatant can then be directly injected for LC or GCMS analysis. The dispersive SPE sorbent is chosen to retain matrix components and not the analytes of interest. In some cases, mixed sorbents may be used. 
For samples with a high fat matrix, primary secondary amine mixed with C18 sorbent is recommended. For samples with high levels of chlorophyll and carotenoids, for example spinach and carrots, primary secondary amine is mixed with graphitized carbon black to reduce the coloured compounds. Although the addition of graphitized carbon black helps remove pigments, it has been noted that there is a low recovery of structurally planar pesticides. The extraction recoveries of planar pesticides can be increased by addition of toluene in the extraction step. Advances in sorbents allow the removal of chlorophyll without the absorption of planar compounds. Catchers is simple, cost effective and produces high quality analytical results. The simple methodology allows a large number of samples to be prepared in a short period of time. This, in conjunction with the low solvent volumes used and the lack of chlorinated solvents, produces an inexpensive sample preparation technique. Furthermore, this technique allows the targeting of a wide variety of compounds from a vast array of food samples and provides good recovery and reproducibility. The few disadvantages of catchers are that ultra-clean samples are not produced and the target analytes are not concentrated. This can be remedied by the use of solid phase extraction, although this is a much more intensive sample preparation technique.